Hi. This is an ultra microtone machine. This machine can cut very thin slices of the sample that you're going to do transmission electron microscopy on. You can also use it for light microscopy, but then you use thicker samples. This machine can go down to 50 nanometer in slices, the thickness of the sample that is. To cut the sample, you use either glass pieces like this. You know when you break glass, you create very sharp edges, and those edges can be used as knives. First, you use a machine that looks like this. Then you start with a long glass rod. This glass rod has already been cut several times. But after a while you achieve this, then you cut, cut this glass piece with the machine and divide it in half. So then you get the even smaller piece. And then again you divide this in half and then you end, end up with square pieces like this. These ones you crack in the middle and that create these triangles. Here you can see four cut knives. The first one is not good enough. It has some cracks in the top here of the edge. The second one it looks uneven and that's also bad. The third one you see doesn't have a sharp edge. It's actually flat on top here, so that's been cracked in the wrong way. The fourth one, however, is very good. That has a nice clean sharp edge. This can be used for cutting. The other thing you can use is diamond. This is a, it's a diamond knife and it actually has a small cup here with, which is filled with water. I will show you later why you do that. Here you can see two diamond cutting bolts. As I said before, this cup here is filled with water. And that is because when you cut and the, and the sample will slice, the slice will float up on the surface here of the water, makes it more easy for you to pick it up. The difference between these both, as you see here, is that this diamond knife on the, on the right one compared to the left one has different lengths. So you can buy different sizes of these diamond knives. That is just a cost related question. The other thing is that the edge shape, the angle of the edge of the knife can be of different degrees. So you can buy different of, of those as well, depending on what you want to cut. You take this diamond boat and mount it in the, in the tool holder here. The sample you mount here on a moving arm, and that arm goes up and down like this, and progress forward very slowly. And when you have your diamond knife on the other side, you actually slice it off slice by slice by slice. So it's sort of like chopping onions, right? So here we have our three samples that we embedded yesterday. Now they have been dried out and hardened completely. So let's pick them out. So now we're going to, to cut with the diamond from the top here to slice off our sample. So this we put in the ultra microtone machine now. Screw it tight. If the sample is far away into the plastic, it is good to start by grind, grinding it down on sandpaper. Now you can see that the sample is fully embedded with plastic all the way around the edges. Then we start to trim the sample with a glass knife and then we do the final cutting with the diamond. Like so. I usually cut here with a cutting angle of seven degrees. That I think is, works okay. When you actually start to cut, you use the binoculars of the machine to look into. This magnifies the cutting area and makes it much, much more easy to see what you actually are doing. So now we are trimming the front face of the piece. And this is vital to make it flat against the knife. Otherwise it can come in at the, at the angle to the knife. And that makes that you cut the sample unevenly. So now we switch to trim the sides. We want the sides to be at a very, very small angle, so the piece will be peppered and not squared shaped in the end. So now let's trim the other side.
It can be very nice to have some small brush to clean up when you get lots of pieces here. Then you see better what you're doing. Now we're going to trim the top and bottom pieces of the sample. Then we turn the sample horizontal. Now when the sample is, uh, is trimmed finished, we're going to switch to a diamond knife. I have already removed the glass knife, so let's put in the diamond knife now. Make sure that nothing touched the, uh, this edge of the knife. So, now I put in the hose here that will fill water in the boat. So now we're going to cut with the diamond knife. Here it's vital that you cut very, very thin samples, otherwise you break the diamond knife. One click on the turning wheel means that it's half a micro. Now it starts to cut. When the slices are colorful, that means that they are in the visible light range of thickness. And that means uh, sort of a micrometer size. Then they become thin as for suitable for electron microscopy. Then they become more transparent, less colorful. Now I got water on top of my sample. We don't want that. So I clean it with a brush. You can also use the brush to gently clean off the pieces on the knife. So, now we cut clean samples with the full size of the area that we want. I set the machine to cut 120 nanometer slices. And all ones we that's on the surface now, we remove with the brush. Here comes the slices now. The speed you cut with depends on, on the sample. Some samples need higher speed, some samples need lower speed. I think I have one that I'm going to try now. So first I remove the, the most of the rubbish. Use the eyelash to select out the piece you want. I do this work by continuously looking in the binoculars. So now I have the piece that I want free floating. I take the grid with the left hand, put it beneath the water surface, take the eyelash with the other tweezer, force the slice on top of the grid and then gently drag it up from the surface. And that's it. I can try to take away a little of the water by the brush. Here we have the piece. So now either you heat up and dry the sample on a heating plate or let it dry in air. Then you put it in a storage box. Here you can see a light microscopy image of a somewhat thicker sample than the one that we use for a TM. You can see the cross section of the paper here. And that's it. Now I showed you the ultramicrotome and how it operates. Hope it helped you. Bye.